A runaway train in Ohio carrying hazardous materials sped down the tracks with no one at the helm for nearly 70 miles today. A train under control is generally pretty safe, but even then they can be a force to reckon with. A train out of control is a disaster waiting to happen. Perhaps one of the more infamous runaway train cases is the CSX Crazy Eights incident. May 15, 2001 started as another ordinary day in the small town of Walbridge, Ohio. At CSX's Stanley Yard, a train was being put together using locomotive number 8888, an EMD SD40-2 built for Conrail in 1987. The engineer was on board with his conductor and brakeman monitoring their train movements on the ground. While moving at 11 miles per hour, he noticed a misaligned yard lead switch ahead of his train. He reasoned the train wouldn't be able to stop in time, given the damp rails. He fully applied the independent brake and slightly applied the automatic brake. Still not confident he would stop in time at 8 miles per hour, he went to set the dynamic brake. Only problem was, he actually accidentally set the throttle to notch 8. In other words, full power. Believing he set the brakes properly, he stepped off the train and ran ahead to realign the switch, doing so seconds before it crossed. He ran alongside the locomotive to reboard, but number 8888 just kept on picking up speed. Slick handrails and poor footing caused him to slip and get dragged for about 80 feet before letting go. At 12.35 with the train running loose without a crew, he quickly contacted an employee on the north end of the yard, who then notified the yardmaster. Stanley Yard's tower block operator, senior train master John Hosfeld, and the Toledo branch train dispatcher were also informed. Meanwhile, the train's brakeman saw the train leave the yard and thought the engineer had a heart attack. The brakeman and John Hosfeld pursued the train in his truck, hoping to board it at a railroad crossing. They waited for it a couple miles south, but it was already going too fast to safely jump on. At 12.38, local authorities and the Ohio State Police were notified of the runaway train. CSX 8888 ran loose heading south on the Toledo Branch subdivision. It had 47 cars in tow, 22 loaded, and 25 empty. Two of those were tank cars holding molten phenol an extremely toxic and flammable substance used in dyes, glues, and paints. As the train increased speed, railroad crossings were blocked off by police and first responders gave chase. News media followed it in a helicopter. At Dunbridge, they routed the train onto a 10 mile per hour siding, but it stayed on the rails. The train slipped through Bowling Green as officials devised some other rescue attempts. At 1.35, the train was directed into Galatea siding, it again stayed on the tracks. In Mortimer, a portable derail was placed on the tracks. Problem was, it was designed for slow speed movement and was flung from the tracks by the speed of the train. Police radar guns clocked the train's speed at 46 miles per hour through Findlay. Despite being in rural Ohio, the lack of headlights, horn, and bell to warn of its approach still made the runaway pose a great risk. Further down the line at the US 68 crossing north of Dunkirk, a sheriff was sent to shoot at the fuel cutoff switch, which in turn would cut the supply of diesel fuel to the engine. This did nothing though as he actually shot the fuel cap, and even then the switch had to be held down for a few seconds to engage it. The situation grew worse as northbound train Q636 was approaching the runaway head-on going north. On top of that, if the runaway made it past Kenton, it would hit a downhill stretch with 25 mile per hour curves. Dispatch told Q636's crew to clear the main line and take the nearest siding possible. At Dunkirk, they ran into the siding at speed and came to a stop. At 205 doing about 45 miles per hour, the runaway passed Q636 and its lone engine, SD40-2 number 8392. Its crew, veteran engineer Jesse Knowlton and conductor Terry Forson, volunteered to chase the runaway with their engine. They switched to the main line, and the chase began. <laughs> 
Knowlton stuck his engine in notch A and tore down the line at speeds upwards of 65 miles per hour, laying on the horn. For several miles, they gave chase, and so did Hossfeld in his truck. Eventually, the crew of 8392 caught up to the runaway at Blanchard. They gradually slowed down and coupled to the rear hopper car at around 45 miles per hour. Knowlton applied full dynamic brakes and immediately started slowing the train down. Further ahead, CSX readied a GP38-2 with a hopper car off a local train to couple to the front of the runaway if necessary. Rolling through Kenton, the runaway had slowed to 12 miles per hour. At the Ohio State Route 31 crossing, John Hosfeld was able to jump aboard and finally stop the train. At last, everyone could breathe a sigh of relief knowing a disaster had been prevented. An inspector from the Federal Railroad Administration arrived to inspect number 8888 and found that apart from the now burnt brake shoes, the unit had no faults. The cause of the runaway was deemed human error on part of the engineer. He accidentally set the throttle to full power instead of full dynamic brakes. The two handles are close to each other, so he managed to mix them up in a hurry when trying to stop his train in the yard. The air brakes wouldn't have done much either, given the air hoses between the locomotive and cars were disconnected when the train was switching in the yard. A report stated the alerter that could have automatically stopped the train was disabled on part of the independent brake being applied. The engineer, with 35 years of experience, remained unnamed by CSX, and his disposition is unknown. As for Hosfeld, Knowlton, and Forsen, they were celebrated as heroes, being interviewed by the media. The press called the incident the Crazy Eights. Then President George W. Bush asked to meet the three heroes, exchanging handshakes and hugs. Eventually, the media spotlight faded and everyone returned to business like usual. But the story of the Crazy Eights incident wasn't over just yet. In August 2004, Mark Bomback was hired by 20th Century Fox to write the screenplay for a film titled Runaway Train. The idea for this film was inspired by a 2002 Reader's Digest article that dramatized the Crazy Eights runaway. The film was soon retitled Unstoppable and would cast Chris Pine as a rookie conductor and Denzel Washington as a veteran locomotive engineer. Their normal day at work turns into them chasing down a runaway train. In November 2008, 20th Century Fox reached out to Hosfeld, Knowlton, and Forsen to help scout locations, tell their stories to write the screenplay while ensuring railroad accuracy, and to educate the actors on how to be a railroader. Many aspects of the film took inspiration from The Runaway, but often exaggerated them. The film released in November 2010 to generally favorable reviews. In retrospect, CSX's Runaway Train in 2001 could have ended a lot worse. Luckily, an Operation Lifesaver train arrived in the yard not long before the incident occurred. Several years after The Runaway, Railroad museums sought to preserve CSX number 8888. The railroad wasn't interested though and instead rebuilt it into SD 40-3 number 4389 in 2015. Rescue locomotive number 8392 was retired around 2008 and sold to National Railway Equipment. At the end of the day, if it weren't for the quick thinking and bravery of the first responders and railroad employees, we could have been telling a far more grim story. Thank you to my channel members. Special thanks to Mooter and Transit Kid Jason for subscribing to the Conductor tier. 